In this video, traders, we are going to look at a swing trading strategy, which is mean reversion rather than trending for the FTSE 100. Stay tuned. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. All right, so I have for you today in this video, a mean reversion swing trading strategy for the FTSE 100. Now mean reversion is when we're looking for the market to stretch and we're looking for it to come back to some kind of equilibrium, whether we're using a moving average, whether we're using just some kind of spring stretching and retracing as opposed to a trend when we're looking for a continuation of the move. So some people call it an outside in trade rather than an inside out trade, mean reversion, whatever. The idea is we're trying to pick the turning point for the market. And in this example, we're going to use the FTSE 100. If you go onto our channel sponsor, Core Spreads Australia's platform, they have it down as the UK 100. And the spread now is super tight. Go and check it out for yourself. I'll link to them in the description below. So what are the rules and what are we looking for? So we're really looking for a, a kind of market which is range bound is better, but it's still going to work in, in a mild trend environment. Of course, if we're in a big trend environment, then the rules won't be triggered and you won't be into the trade. So you're kind of self-protecting in that way. Um, but what we're really looking for is for a swing high to form or a swing low to form, and then for it to be tested a second time after a period of time. We don't want to test it too soon, and we've got a rule for that we'll look at in a moment, look at the exact rules in a moment, and that kind of stops you getting caught in a trend environment. So you want some rotation, some retest, a sign of failure, and then we're taking a trade in the direction of that failure, really looking only for a quick move. There are some options which we'll talk about at the end of how we can maybe stretch and look for a longer move, but the idea is we're kind of seeing the little whites of the eyes of the opposing side, supply demand is shifting. We're joining that, we're framing the trade with a, a quite a sensible stop position based on what's happened recently, and we're looking for it, a counter trend type trade. So let's have a look at the rules. So first of all, we're gonna mark down our swing highs and lows. Um, and that's pretty obvious, guys. You're probably very familiar with doing that in your charts. And if you're using uh, Core Spreads Australia, Core Trade 2 platform, very simple to do. And we'll head over to the platform in a moment and run through this, how to place the orders, how we would set up uh, the trade. Uh, so we're putting our swing high level in there and we've got a swing let low level in there at the moment. Of course, that's going to adjust. And as we get to a new high, new low, we'd move our swing highs and lows. But the recent swing high and low is important. So here we've got the recent swing high. We've actually got it there, but then the next day goes higher. And we wouldn't take the trade because we need to have some rules in between. So we might down swing highs and lows. The minimum gap in between for the trigger is going to be 10 days. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the price to go through the swing high and close back under it. So this type of pattern, so this type of uh, wick to the upside, this type of move uh, that goes through and fails and closes back underneath. Now we have to have a 10 day gap in between, which is why we wouldn't be taking it on this one, because this one, yes, it does go through that high, but it comes back and closes under, but we need that gap. It's important, that gap. And the reason we have that gap is so we don't get caught in trending environments, because trending environments will take out highs, sometimes they'll reverse, the next day they'll chug up. We need to see some kind, in the case of taking the short trade here, some type of supply coming into the market over a prolonged period of time, to kind of give us a clue that there are some bears out there, there are some sellers that are prepared to be reasonably aggressive out there. And so 10 day period is what we're looking for. So we wouldn't be taking that, comes down, again, we wouldn't be taking uh, this short trade because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six candles, not enough. However, this is the trade that we would take. Now, if you decide, by the way, you want to adjust and adapt this to make it a little bit tighter and say five days, then by all means, you know, this is a, a kind of an idea for you to adjust and mold. Uh, so you've got a, a specific rule based strategy for the FTSE 100, but you can adjust and adapt it to, to suit your requirements. So here we go. This is a, a trigger. We'd definitely be taking this one uh, because it closes below that price swing high. There's more than 10 days gap in between. Markets pushed up, pushed down, closed here. So we'd be now interested in taking uh, this trade and it will be one that we definitely take. So the rules of the trade are, we've got a swing high, we've got a swing low. We have also got the 
distance between them. We've got 10 days in between them. And so what we would do is we would place an alert at this level. So we don't have to be in front of the screen all the time. We can place an alert and the alert, alert basically fires off, sends an email or whatever it may be and tells us, hey, this high has been taken out or this low has been taken out. Fine, now what do we do? So once we're alerted to it, we can come in and we can see the price is probably trading up here, whatever the price may be. We now enter a stop entry order back in the direction of the mean. So in other words, in this case, we're kind of trading up here. We want to enter here on the short side and to do that, we'd have a sell stop, but it would be a fresh order to get us into the trade. Normally a sell stop would be a stop or loss, but in this case, because we wait for the price to come back down here to trigger, it would be a sell stop that would get us into the trade. Now the beauty of that, of course, is if the price goes marching on and on and on, no problem, we're not in a trade. In actual fact, if it ends up closing the next day, we cancel that order anyway and look for a new uh, fresh trade setup. So we've got our sell stop entry and we would have an order that is attached to that order that basically if this is triggered and we end up going short here as the price comes back through this swing high, we would put a stop above that high intraday. So it's a very simple framework here. And whatever that stop may be, you know, it might end up being you know, 20, 20 ticks or something like that, 20 points. Um, Easily done, and your price target, so we do this all thing, we enter the stop entry, we enter an actual buy stop to get us out of the trade in the case of the short example. Uh, the buy target would be, or the close, or the, uh, the place where we'd actually take profits on the trade, would be day two, day three. So we're looking for the third day close. So you can see this is a very kind of uh, grab the mean reversion trade and get out of there. Now. You can adjust it. You can say, hey, I'll have a trailer. But the idea is that you're looking for, you know, another day of move and then really another day of disappointment. And the ideal scenario, guys, is that you have this. You, know, you have this, imagine that's the day one. And then day two maybe just sits there and does nothing. Day three kind of really upsets the bulls and you get that further down draft. You're looking to close that on the close of day three. So 4.30 UK time. We're using the underlying regular trading hour session. Now you can adapt that and adjust it to suit. Some people might want to be more aggressive and take it on day two. Some people might want to take it on day one. You might want to scale. You might want to just hold it and look for those big winners that kind of literally fake the upside and do a complete reversion. You know, that's up to you. But I think this is a good, happy medium of taking some off the table, having it very systematic as well. You don't have to be in front of the screen for this one. Literally day three, you can step in and you can just close your position at 4.30. So it's either going to be stopped out, fine, you're not being front, you need to be in front of the screen for that one, or it goes in your direction. Now, if you want to have a trailing stop and kind of put a trailer at the end of the close of day one and day two and use that and move that stop down, I think that's a good idea. So as you close day one here, uh, and then you say, right, well, once we close day two, there's my stop on day one. Once we close that, that et cetera. So you start moving the stop down. So I don't think that's a bad idea. Anyway, what we'll do, let's go uh, check out how we would place this trade in theory or in practice. So that's a theory. Let's look in practice. Let's look at a FTSE 100 chart, UK 100 chart, and how we would place all the orders and the process of doing it. Let's hit the screens now. All right, traders. So I'm in the Core Spreads Australia Core Trader 2 platform here. Uh, logged in and we are greeted with the Market Explorer, but the FTSE 100 is actually the UK 100, is what they call it on Core Spreads Australia under the Popular Markets section. Of course, you could just uh, browse to it via indices. A spread on this, a bread in mind, guys, is 20 to 6 when I'm filming this at the moment, uh, which is after hours technically. The FTSE closes at 4:30 UK time. Spread is still 0.4. So pretty decent spread. Okay, so let's run through quickly the, the, the strategy and how we do it. So first of all, we need to open a chart. Very simple. Uh, we'll open the chart here. Uh, we don't need this. We can actually trade from the chart uh, with the core trader too, but we don't need it. So we're going to mark down our highs and lows. Now, we're going to go and just use a standard horizontal drawing line. And um, we're going to mark down our lows here. And we're going to mark down our highs uh, with this one, actually. Okay, some of you are going, well, so why are you not marking down this one? Well, if you remember rightly, the rules state that we have to have 10 days in between the swing high and swing low. So that's the nearest swing high. There's uh, nine days, I think. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so, you know, we're, it's fine. By the time we get there, it will be 10. 
um, and this was the last one really for the 10 days even though the, you know technically these but this is really the, the kind of big swing point if you have 10 days between this let's say we do some work here for 10 days then obviously that'll be the new level so let's use these so really what we want to do is we mark down our levels the minimum gap's got to be 10 days so we're happy with those uh, and what we're going to do is place an alert. Now, we don't want to place an alert exactly at that level. We want to place an alert a little bit earlier. Because the last thing you want to do, guys, is being alerted to something intraday. It goes through a level. You're out doing something. You're in the car. Whatever you were doing, you just don't want to be alerted on the day and scrambling to try to get an order through. Uh, you need a little bit of, of heads up, if you like, so you're not just panicking around doing stuff. So set an alert. I want to set my alert at 7,400, so 50, tick, 50 pips away. Um, a day away perhaps and 7050 so very simply we just go back we set the alert go to here we our buy alert we just do I can punch it in or I can use the thing 7400 and not 74,000 uh, set the alert that's just depending on which side we're doing and I will also go and set an alert at 7050 I think we said that was close enough so simply done so there's my alert set and I've got them configured um, ready to alert me as and when. So let's go back to the chart and see exactly what's going to happen here. So really what we do, um, let's imagine now that we got alerted to this fact and we got to 7,000. Let's say that was, for, for argument's sake, let's put it at 7,000, okay? I know it's at 7,003 and, and it makes sense to be accurate. But let's say it's at 7,000. Market had gone down. Market had, had traded through the level. Because don't forget, guys, the, the idea of this is that the market trades through the actual level you want so it drives uh where's my arrow i can almost clicked it there so it drives through um let's just pivot that there so let's say it's there so it drives through that 7000 and then back again so we'd want to enter a buy stop so bear in mind the market will be trading underneath it now we're not going to be able to put this in now because obviously the market is trading above it. But when the market is trading below a level, we can put a buy stop in. All right, so how would we be putting our orders in? So let's say the price had now gone through and let's say it poked through and now we want to be ready if it comes back up because that's the trade. The trade is that it goes through and comes back up into today. We've been alerted, we're ready. Let's say it's trading at 6970 at the moment. So what do we do? So we're gonna go straight to our order book and we're gonna say, or well, straight to our blotter and check an order. We're gonna set the buy side and we're gonna put 7,000 because that would be the level. Now, uh, core, uh, core Trader 2 is sensible enough and has got a little bit of logic in it that basically if I try to do that now, it's gonna put it through as a limit, as you can see. So whatever the size is, that thinks it's a limit because we're above that and that makes sense. So obviously when we did that trade, it would be under, it would be under 7,000. So just to show you what it would look like if we were doing, let's say we're putting at 7,300. So the price is below, it assumes then, um, what we 7,300, it assumes that you want to put a stop in. So it's got a logic there. So really, you know, if we had that, that's exactly what we'd do. We'd have our, we'd be trading under 7,000. We put our buy stop at 7,000. Now, astute of you have gone, okay, what about the stop? So you need to attach your stop as you do this. Very easy to do. We attach the stop, select the check checkbox. And, you know, if we were doing the trade, let's say we we're going at 7,000, our stop would be at 6,000, uh, let's say uh, 960. So the low was that. So what we'd be doing now, and we obviously assume this price, the current price would be somewhere between that and that. What it'd be doing is saying, okay, if the price comes back up through 7,000, I want to go long, and there's my quantity here. And when, if I go long, I want there to be a stop at 6,960, which is below the low. If it doesn't and it keeps going, this would never be triggered. So very easily we can you know, frame the trade, we can sort out the trade, and we can be you know, in the trade without doing anything apart from being involved intraday. So a recap, as the market's trading through that low, and this is just an example, guys, of where we are at the moment. As we start to trade through that low, when we're there, we have the buy stop there, we add the sell under that low, and it never ever gets triggered unless we come back up through there. Once we come back up through there, bang, we're long, and the sell stop goes in, and then it's up to you to manage the trade using the kind of three-day rule uh, as you prefer. Anyway, guys, that is uh, the mean reversion swing trading strategy for the FTSE 100, and this was uh, Core Spreads Australia Core Trader 2 platform. Go and check it out. A link to these guys in the description uh, below.
I'll cancel these orders so they don't get filled at some point. Uh, make sure that we have a clear blotter, always a good thing to do uh, whenever you're trading and messing around with a platform. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.